Continuing the current trend of remastering games for newer generations of hardware, and I suppose gamers as well, comes Uncharted The Nathan Drake Collection. It's Drake, only shinier. I'll jump to the good part, just for you. The first Uncharted certainly set a new bar for action-adventure, with what I remember being thrilling, edge-of-your-seat action in a visually breathtaking landscape. Oh, at the time, it was one of the most incredible games I'd ever played. Was it the same for you going back? Well, no, but don't get me wrong, it's still a wonderful game. And very much playable, especially with the fine-tuning Bluepoint games have done to give it a revamp. But even though this game didn't come out that long ago in the scheme of things, we've come a long way, haven't we? Uh, we really have. And I guess that's what's kind of wonderful about picking up a collection like this. It's like playing through the evolution of a studio's approach to game design. The Nathan Drake collection is presented nicely with some obvious new features straight off the bat. Yes, first up, you have the option of playing through the campaign of all three games in the series, or choosing a speedrun mode, which will time your playthrough. Nice. I like that they're including specific, unique modes like this in remastered games. You know, things that cater to people who've played these games before and are looking for something new to challenge them in what is a very familiar environment. There are also now six difficulty modes. The game follows the current trend of including a just the story mode. Here it's called Explorer. Then they ramp all the way up to the aptly named Brutal difficulty. Which sounds like an unnecessary world of pain to me. Yeah, especially since these games are ones that are arguably more fun on easy. Enemies throughout this franchise are known to unfairly eat bullets like there is no tomorrow. Well, let's look at what's been improved upon with the first Uncharted. Now what? First of all, visually, it's had a decent overhaul, a big improvement in texture detail, but most noticeably in the lighting. Yeah, it's a good example of how much of a difference ambient occlusion makes. When you see the light reflecting off everything in such a natural way, giving it that lovely sheen. Character movement is still a little awkward, though. Drake kind of skates around. You're not kidding. Yeah. As for the gameplay, the grenade throw from 2 and 3 has been added to 1, and the shooting mechanics have been improved. Though the general gunplay and cover system still isn't great. Yeah, there is some improvement to the aiming, but you can't revamp basic level design, and that's where the first Uncharted feels the most dated. Oh my god. Mm, you'll spend a lot of time stumbling into open areas with obvious cover walls everywhere. Oh, man. A scene which repeats itself over and over. Yeah, there was certainly a lot that Uncharted brought to the table that felt really new. However, it was still following that cover shooter formula of the time, which feels very dated now. Lots of conveniently placed barrels. Mm, I like barrels. Less talking, more shooting! That said, the story and the setup straight off the bat just hooks you in, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Nolan North is in fine form from the very start. Drake is instantly likeable, but you're also immediately invested in all of these characters and the excitement of the treasure hunt. I'm telling you, Sully. This is it. This is finally it. Yeah. Ultimately, it was that magic that won this franchise so many fans. I mean, there are so many charming moments in this game. <laughs> Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, and I do think, in fairness, they did do some interesting things with the level design in those explorative moments, at least. Cozy. Particularly with camera perspective and direction of movement. Those early puzzles were pretty lackluster, though. A lot of problems were solved by shooting them. That looks like an old powder cake over there. Yeah, that's true. Well, let's move on to Uncharted 2, because the stakes certainly felt higher in that sequel. Oh, man. My memory is so vivid of playing through that train car off the cliff edge intro for the very first time. Now, I remember thinking, holy crap, this is so intense, and I've only been playing this for 30 seconds. But it also started to take more time with those environmental climbing puzzles, which is great. Yeah, and you can also see where more recent games like the Tomb Raider reboot took influence in the way that Drake is so brutally wrecked in that opening sequence. I mean, he takes so many hits, the poor guy can't catch a break. And I remember thinking the exact same thing when I played as Lara Croft. Yeah, it's important though, because it reminds you that your hero isn't infallible. Yeah. I like that these tense, <sighs> brutal moments are intercut with flashbacks too. The old, what could possibly go wrong? I mean, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> ah! 
some beautiful locations as well, and the visual boost in this remastered version makes those locations all the sweeter. Nice parking job. And I noticed they stepped up the puzzles as well. It was never anything too taxing, but they definitely felt more inventive to me than what we saw in one. All right, we're in. But what I liked about two is that it introduced a lot more stealth. And this is because so much of Drake's time is spent ruthlessly gunning down bad guys, it's hard to marry that with his hero persona. So in 2, you do more stealth takedowns and use tranquilizers, that sort of thing. Oh, that's brilliant. Guns? What are you thinking? Relax, Gandhi. They're tranquilizer guns. Totally non-lethal. The hand-to-hand -hand combat improves a bit too, although it's still a little clunky, so it's not something you'd use unless you really needed to. Well, the melee combat was greatly improved in Uncharted 3, so let's move on to that. Oh. What a game. Now let's see it. This is obviously still fairly recent, so it holds up really well, doesn't it? Absolutely. The game takes you on such a journey all over the world. Though I loved that it begins in London. That cityscape was something that felt so different for Uncharted. Oh, and that classic barroom brawl. Immediately you feel the shift in design as that combat is just so much more interesting. Strong counters, using items in the environment. And the way Drake moves through spaces is suddenly so much more natural as he stumbles to regain his balance and steady himself as he travels. The climbing as well, much more intuitive. 3 is such a far cry from those repetitive stop and pop sequences from the first game. There are interesting climbing puzzles, clues to find, loads of variation. Yeah, it showed us a new calibre of cinematic gameplay, didn't it? Exciting chase sequences, the cutscenes are really well directed, and the story in 3 was the best yet. God, do you know what this is? It's a book, mate. There's a lot of them in here. It's a library. It's not just any book, wise ass. Belong to T.E. Lawrence. You know, Lawrence of Arabia. Yes, 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 I know who he is. Yeah, I loved how there was this feeling of getting the gang back together. I mean, this is still one of my all-time best gaming experiences. And talk about stunning. I remember this game looking good, but seeing it all gussied up on the PS4 is a whole new level of pretty. Yeah, it's really impressive. So, Hex, do you think this remastered collection is worth it? I think so. I mean, often when someone is new to a franchise, they'll ask me if they should go back to the beginning or skip ahead to the more recent games. And that's a tough call because I don't want them to get turned off a great series and give up because they get bogged down in the dated gameplay of that first game. So sometimes I will tell them to skip it. But in this case, it really does hold up quite beautifully. I mean, there is some repetition in the shooting sections of Uncharted 1, but these three games still make for such an epic and exciting gaming journey. Nice. Thanks. Yeah, for anyone who hasn't experienced the series yet, it's a definite must-play, and the tweaks do liven it up. For fans, I think if you already own these three games, it depends on how much you want to replay them on current gen with the visual improvements. Now it looks like we're getting somewhere. After that, we better be. I'm giving it three and a half out of five stars. Well, don't forget you also get access to the Uncharted 4 multiplayer beta, and since all the old multiplayer has been removed from this collection, that's a pretty big incentive. I mean, I think this will please fans and newcomers alike, so I'm giving it four and a half out of five stars. What do we have here? Careful. Ah! <laughs> <Christ> <laughs> mighty. <laughs> Just kidding. Nate, you're gonna give me a goddamn heart attack. 